Hey, this is Tim King from the band Soil and Embryonic Autopsy, and you're watching CMS TV. Turn that shit up. Chris Aiken presents, and I, of course, am Chris Aiken, and today we are going to be talking some death metal, and I don't mean this horse shit death core that we get fed so often that is called death, death metal. I'm talking death metal, 90s style, old school, and surprisingly, for me anyway, here to talk about it, is um, the vocalist of the band. You probably know him from his other band um, <laughs> that had some success, Oil, with, um, he's Tim King. Tim, how are you, man? Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? It's good to talk to you, dude. It's great to talk to you about this new album, Origins of the Deformed. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start right there. I, I feel like a dummy that I did not even know you had this death metal band because I'm, I'm in the know, you know, and I love death metal. And I cannot believe that I missed on a band that fits so perfectly what I listened to as I did missing you guys's debut record. So, and now this one is just a murderer, man. I mean, just unbelievable, man. Congrats on great work. Oh, thanks so much. And, you know, I mean, my return to death metal is I'm, I'm like you, you know, I listen to everything and, you know, I've been do doing soil for 26 years, but before that, uh, I had the band oppressor, which right. I sang and played bass for, which is a, super brutal technical death metal band and i've always just listened to death metal you know always picked up on the new stuff that's come out and i never stopped listening to it so when i had the chance to you know get back into it with uh, embryonic autopsy you know i jumped at the chance and my buddy scott roberts who plays guitar and and does the majority of the writing musically for the band you know asked me if i wanted to sing on this stuff that he had you know, I just fell in love with it and it, it just reinvigorated me into the whole death metal thing again. And, you know, once again, why you say, you know, how come I didn't know about this? It's kind of like you put out that debut record and the debut is just the kind of quote unquote getting to know you. You know, we had to set up complete social media pages and right. just let people even know that the name was out there. We did a, some touring on it. So, you know, a brand new band, a debut album is always, you know, kind of a, you know, labor of love to the getting to know you phase but you know we established a nice solid foundation and now we recorded this new record origins of the deformed and it seems to be getting out it's not coming out till june 14th but it's been circulating around a lot and we definitely honed in on you know a sound for the band and a you know went over the top lyrically and <laughs> song titles and musically and we just wanted to take everything to the utmost extreme you know that we possibly could on this record so uh in the fine words of, you know, a very good friend of mine that passed away, Broken Hope, he uh, he always said with every Broken Hope record that he was on that he wanted just to get heavier and heavier, which, you know, you can only push so far. But, right. you know, I always kind of kept that in the back of my head and I, when he said that, you know, it's it's words that, you know, even ring to my through my head all these years later since he said that. So rest in peace, my brother. 
love and miss oh, yeah. you. But that's yeah, a little uh, little salute to Joe. Yeah, no kidding, man. Well, dude, let's let's give a salute to your vocals. I I when I started listening to to this record to Oranges of the Deformed, all I hear is Ross Dolan of Immolation. You've got that. I don't even know what you call it. It's very low, but it's dry. You know, that low, dry, just pain. <laughs> For lack of a better term, I don't know what to call it, but it reminds me so much of Immolation. Are you, A, are you influenced at all by, by Ross? And B, you know, how long have you been doing death metal vocals? Uh, it's funny you say that because uh, I didn't really realize the connection until you just said it now. But Ross is actually an awesome guy. In Oppressor, we did Cannibal Corpse, Brutal Truth, Immolation. Oppressor was was a tour that we did okay. back in uh, 97, you know. And I've always loved Immolation and appreciated what they've done and all that. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really going for that that vocal style. It's kind of funny you said that. What I was really listening to and honing into on this record uh was you know naturally to to take the Tim King vocal style whatever the hell that is but you know I was listening to a lot of like influential like early '90s death al death you know albums I, I listened right. a lot to uh, Incantation Onward to Golgotha sure. uh, that Demlick record uh, I can't even remember what the title of it is it's the only one they ever put out but he's got that vocal fry register which is really crazy. Uh, I listen to this EP called Disembowelment Dusk. Okay. Uh, Cannibal Corpse, you know, uh, Butchered at Birth and Tomb of the Mutilated are kind of like a couple things that I was kind of like listening to. And then, you know, I was just kind of going for like the ultra, you know, heavy as heavy could be type gurgly stuff. You know, I just kind of reached into the, the esophagus and pulled out whatever I could on there. <laughs> I, like I said, on this record, we we totally wanted to go over the top as much as possible with you know, just speed and brutality and crazy song titles, disgusting lyrics, you know, just take everything we did last time and turn it up about 10 notches. Right. Is this almost you putting out your alter ego of what people know you as? Is Do you look <laughs> at it that way? Because, I mean, Soil, you know, not to compare A to B, because there's obviously no comparison, but, you know, Soil is kind of a, I'll say, friendlier band, I guess. You know, I mean, you guys are... You know, and, and that goes past just the music. That also goes into you go and see Soil and you generally can meet the band and shake a hand and take a picture. And, all. you know, that's like the nice side. And then you hear this. It's like, whoa, this is these are guys I'd be afraid to meet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, you know, with Soil, it's like I, I've never written a lyric on a Soil record ever. You know, okay. then, you know, our singer Ryan uh, writes all the lyrics and. You know, me and our guitar player, Adam, we do the backing vocals and stuff, you know, on that. And me and Adam, you know, work on writing the riffs and music together, you know, at least in this incarnation of Soil. And, uh, you know, for me, it's like, like I said, I've always loved death metal. It's always been a way for me to kind of get some aggression out. And just that just that style of music is just so invigorating to me for some reason. So, you know, I guess maybe it is. A, a way for me to get a little bit of uh, some pent up aggression out, but uh, right. <laughs> you know, my band that I have put together for embryonic, you know, nicest group of people. And we just have so much fun doing it. And, you know, we, we come out even more so than soil to shake hands and say hi and, and hang out, you know, we're a new band. We got to, you know, do, do the rounds and, and right. gain the fan bases, you know, attention and respect. So, you know, we're, it, we're even more approachable than, than, than you would think. <laughs> sure. Is that difficult to do just because, I, I mean, you know the stigma, man. Uh, you're, in a, you're in a band that's had commercial success. Nobody ever wants to believe that you're, that you're true to it. You know, they, they believe you're not true to death metal. Now, you obviously have a pedigree in it, but a lot of people, A, aren't going to know that. They're going to know soil. Do you find that people are resistant or have you found that people are all in because it's, you know, traditional death metal, which we just don't get much anymore. Well, what's pretty funny about that is when we had Oppressor going, you know, we had Oppressor going for, it was like nine years and we put out three records, a live record and, you know, toured all over the place. You know, we toured Europe, we toured the States n numerous times. So, you know, we were always more of an underground band. We never quite made it to that, you know, status of being like a suffocation or, a, you know, 
cannibal corpse or deicide obituary sure. any of that we were just always considered more <laughs> of a underground death metal band so when we actually did soil you know at first we got a lot of backlash from it people were calling us posers and this and that right. but once soil broke and we put out that scars record and we were on tour with ozzy and rob zombie and then we went and did Ozfest and did all this all of a sudden all these uh death metal bands started forming rock projects all of a sudden <laughs> like uh kelly from atheist had this band called neurotica right and yeah. jack owen went and formed a band called the drift and you know i went to a cannibal corpse show and alex you know webster's like dude you got to tell me what it was like touring with ozzy i can't believe you did that i'm <laughs> so excited for you so everybody at first you know was like uh oh, what you know what are these guys doing they're selling out but once they saw what we were kind of doing with soil and you know the heaviness that we did have for a for a rock band you know, and the success we were having, all of a sudden everybody started looking going, oh, well, those guys from Oppressor can do it. Maybe we can do it. You know? <laughs> right. And, you know, I just kind of never looked back, but I always kept listening to death metal. So, like I said, when I had the chance to to dust off the old pipes, I mean, we're talking, it was almost two decades since I had sang death metal before we put out that first embryonic autopsy record. So I didn't even know if I could do it anymore. Right. Oddly enough, my voice kind of got shittier over the years so it was even easier to do that. <laughs> i had more of a higher kind of probably you know less trained voice at the time back when we did oppressor so now you know as i'm older and more decrepit i just kind of was able to do the gurgles <laughs> more and get more kind of different kind of uh voices out of out of myself with it probably i'm right. still a little more angry now that i now these days too so who knows <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's what you get for becoming a record exec as well as a as a band guy it just makes you more mean <laughs> oh i'm i'm about as jaded as jaded can as can be in this day and age <laughs> a glutton for punishment i i never stopped being in the music industry like you know maybe i should have taken a break and started laying concrete or <laughs> selling computers or something but i just never had a break so that's probably where the, all the angst comes from <laughs> <laughs> very nice man well dude tell me about the guys in the band uh, specifically scott because there's two scott roberts in metal i'm not sure which one you have do you have the otep guy or do you have the biohazard guy the uh the otep guy uh, okay and scott roberts is actually uh he does all of our guitars and bass tech work in soil and he's also a mainstay in saliva and stuff like that and he was also in the band otep for a spell mm. so that's how we kind of got it together we were sitting on the soil bus and he's just like hey you ever, would you ever consider getting back into death metal i've got all these songs that i you know was have been working on with this drummer and uh you want to check it out and i checked it out and we we started recording just like some demoized versions on days off we'd sneak into a, you know a hotel and set up the bathroom into like a reverb chamber and i'd track right. vocals with one foot up on a toilet seat you know we're <laughs> kind of testing it out but uh you know me and scott formed the band and we had a session drummer come in and do all the the drums on the first record prophecies of the conjoin and then we got a deal i got us a deal with massacre records okay and uh it's just kind of everything just fell into place i got us a deal with massacre records and i call up some old buddies like james murphy uh terrence hobbs from suffocation a good buddy of mine, Doc Coyle from God Forbid, and he's also in Bad Wolves. Uh, he was always telling me how, you know, God Forbid was influenced by Oppressor with the riffs that we did. So, you know, it was perfect to have him, you know, play a guitar solo on that first record. So when it came time, that, that really helped having some really, you know, uh, high, highly influential special guests on that first sure. record. And, it, you know, got that the band and the album noticed a lot. And then uh, on this new record, you know, I figured, well, we did it the first time. Why don't we do it again? So I recontacted James Murphy and Terrence from Suffocation. And actually this time, James Murphy laid down three solos on the record and Terrence put down one. And I actually got in touch with my buddy, Jack Owen, okay, uh, who's in Six Feet Under now, uh, and asked him to lay a couple solos down, which he did. So we have a huge like array of guest death metal old school all stars on there. And, you know, just to go with what we were doing with the whole record, you know, going, you know, no death core, no modern day death metal, just going right back to the 90s style where it all began, where all our, you know, my favorite bands and Scott's favorite bands and stuff came from. So, you know, we got a killer lineup on there and it's rounded out by, you know, we have a, a girl on bass named Kenzie Dupay. She's uh, amazing. One better bass player than I ever was, you know, <laughs> uh, 
And uh, our drummer, Marco Fimbres, he's, I call him rubber man. Cause that guy can just, I mean, he just blasts like crazy. Right. He's like, he's like a new uh, flow from cryptopsy. I remember, oh, wow. yeah. remember back in the day, how everybody was just like, Oh my God, flow from cryptopsy is just like, he's inhuman. Right. That's, uh, that's kind of the way Marco is. And, you know, once we found him, we're like, Oh my gosh, we got to get this guy in the band because he's just like, he's just uber fast. I mean, nice. Nicer than fast. Or as <laughs> Phil from, or Phil from 11 with creation would say, Oh dude, he's the fastest. <laughs> but, uh, back in the day, Phil was always getting the fastest drummers like Dave Colros and stuff right? like that, you know. So uh, Phil would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and, and, and that part of a death metal band, when you're doing this kind of death metal, is probably the most important ingredient. If you don't have the drummer that can hold it, then it's not going to be good. Yeah. I mean, you got to be able to pull it off live. And, uh, you know, that was always... Uh, something that that i always took very seriously when you know looking listening to death metal because i mean honestly the the vocals are kind of just another instrument in death metal the the drummer was always kind of the star of, of death metal for some mm -hmm. reason it's like everybody like the drummers were the the rock stars of death metal in, in a lot of ways back when we were growing up so right <laughs> you know the faster and more technical the drummer the bigger the band seemed to be it was really crazy yeah, it was long time, dude. I hate it. It's been that long. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm showing our age here. <laughs> I know. Look, you see the white beard on me, man. I'm, you know, it ain't it ain't because of die. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just for men on me. I got to do that to keep keep somewhat of a of a right. Look. Right on, man. Well, dude, let's dig into the record a little bit. You you mentioned Murphy and Owen. They both play on one on the one song that is by far my favorite song, which is Carniv "Carnivorous Abortion," and and I love it because of the guitar solos. The the solos kind of at the end of the song, amazing stuff, man. Great tune. Tell me tell me a little bit about that song. Oh, uh, you know, with with this song and the whole thing, what we what we started doing is, I mean, I always wanted to call a song embryonic autopsy like back in the oppressor days but okay. oppressor was never kind of about gore or anything it was kind of more about the downfall of humanity and right you know social issues and things like that i was trying to save the world back then uh after i figured out that i couldn't save the world <laughs> now i decided to go full-on gore and kind of like horror story you know storytelling so i instead of naming a song embryonic autopsy decided to name the band that and kind of deal with you know, everything from the embryonic stage and, you know, just kind of getting kind of gross and disgusting right. and like a, you know, like a Clive Barker, you know, Wes Craven type of way of telling stories that, that link in with the band, you know, the band name. And uh, I also was really getting into the theory of, you know, how the pyramids were formed and how, you know, the Aztecs and the Mayans and the, and the Egyptians and stuff, how they built like all those like temples and the hieroglyphics and the pyramids and stuff and kind of dove into the, the alien, you know, the alien interference with that, how like alien, you know, right. the, uh, conspiracy theory of how aliens visited and helped build the pyramids and gave the technology to all those, you know, different cultures. And then once they departed, the cultures kind of fell apart, but we're left with this stuff that we can barely figure out even in this day and age with all our technology. And then, you know, the crash at Roswell and stuff. So I, really started diving into like the alien human hybrid theory about how scientists are, you know, in test tubes and laboratories and stuff, creating alien human hybrids. And that was basically uh, what prophecies of the conjoined dealt with is how these uh, three entities were conjoined and were trying to warn, you know, uh, humanity and all about the, the, the downfall and they were trying to rise up and, and take over once again. And we just continued that with the origins of the deformed, which kind of gets into that, you know, carnivorous abortion is, you know, basically uh, babies that are inside of the womb that are basically consuming each other and then eating the entire <laughs> female host from the, the host. inside out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pleasant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and then you continue the alien part, though, with uh, human vessels of alien hybrid, you know, not, which to me, another probably the number two track on the record, you know. Um, so, yeah, you really it, it does seem like you really invested in a theme and you and you stuck to it through throughout the record. Exactly. And that was kind of what we were going for. And 
I mean, I still wanted to carry on the gore and, you know, over the top crazy factor. I mean, for the mere fact that, you know, the label allowed us to put out uh, the first single called Orgies of the Inseminated. And we just filmed a video and putting out a second single off the album called Dripping in the Vaginal Nectar for the mere fact that, you know, the label allowed that. And, you know, you go on Spotify or YouTube and read that on there. It's kind of funny that we that we got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting, really, because Massacre, while the name sounds like it would fit for death metal, they don't really release a ton of death metal. It's more what like power metal -y type stuff from massacre did is it just a factor that you knew somebody over there and they were willing to sign you to to a deal or because well, because your music doesn't sort of fit what they do yeah i mean uh the the cool thing about massacre is is although they do a lot of like uh power metal and you know progressive type metal is they do mm. stay true to where they started off with like bands like with atrocity and ill disposed yeah. and sinister and stuff is they still do sign death metal not a ton of it but they do have a a good amount and crazy enough how uh how the deal with massacre came about is we had a couple offers on the table from you know various you know uh up and coming you know death metal labels that kind of deal with you know the more brutal stuff but right. uh i was talking to the pub one of the publicists over at massacre records and afm records but his name is dustin hardman yeah, I know dustin. oddly enough he used to manage oppressor back in the day oh wow and then then he was running nuclear blast america when they separated from relapse and now he's a publicist so i you know was asking him you know what he thought about these because you know i'd been out of the death metal scene per se like label wise and stuff still sure. listen to it but it been out of like you know the the promotion business like right yeah. so i kind of asked him about these other labels he's like well you know i do publicity for massacre records let me talk to thomas over there and see what he sees about the band and he sent the full we had the record already in the can it was done artwork and everything and all of a sudden thomas got a hold of me he's like i love it the, the album cover's awesome the music's awesome let's do a deal and you know we signed with them and, and for for uh for our, the label they are they're a huge label i mean they sure. are they're owned by Soul Food Music Distribution, uh, there, which is also part of Believe and Nuclear Blast got sucked right. up with that. So now, you know, Massacre and AFM Records and Nuclear Blast Records and a conglomerate of other record labels are all under the same uh, moniker, which is owned by Believe Music, which is a huge distribution digital aggregator, uh, primarily in Europe, but it's making its way over here. But uh, okay. So the promotion that we're, we, we've gotten as a death metal band is just through the roof. I mean, Thomas and Anya over at Massacre have just been so good to us, just such amazing people. And, you know, they really believe in what we're doing and uh, great partners to have as far as everything. I, we couldn't be happier with the situation we're in label-wise and promotion-wise. Right on, man. Well, and then, and then I saw on, on the press release... You got these huge gigs coming up, and and they, I mean they really are huge. The, you know, I mean, well, I'll start with Milwaukee. You know, if I'm not mistaken, Jamie Josta reinvented that and has done a great job at reinventing that. But it's great that it's back, and you guys are playing Milwaukee, um, the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Talk a little bit about that festival. Are you guys? Where do you slot in on that? And do you slot in as a new band? Does your your you know name in the business get you a little higher up in the in the mix? How do you slot on that? Well, uh, it's the second year of Milwaukee Metal Fest, and Jamie Josta, you know, uh, bought it, and then he's dealing with Tim Bohr over at Sound Talent Agency, who's okay. who actually I met through In Flames. He put on. Uh, an In Flames concert at a VFW hall here in Chicago. And that's how I met Tim Bohr for the first time. So we've known each other forever. But uh, I came in a little late to the party last year to get, you know, embryonic on Milwaukee Metal Fest. And then Jamie this year came. He's like, got to have you on this year. I'm like, oh, absolutely. And, you know, because I've known Jamie from Soil and I've known Tim Bohr for so long, they gave us a, a really nice slot on there and have, have treated us really good with the festival. So, you know, it's a festival that Oppressor played many times back in the day when sure. Jack used to own it. So, you know, it's an honor and a privilege to definitely be able to play it this year. And then, uh, you know, so we're doing that. And uh, graciously enough, too, you know, uh, another good buddy of mine, Jan, who uh, is one of the promoters of Bakken Open Air Festival, yeah. put on that. And that is just going to be, like, sick and over the top. I mean, it'll be Embryonic's first time 
over in Europe, but we'll be, you know, on a festival ground with 80,000 people running around uh, <laughs> at Bakken. And we're on the uh, the Wasteland stage, which is the, the brutal kind of like heavy death metal, you know, okay. uh, heavy stage, which is going to be awesome. So we're playing that with both embryonic and soil. So I have to do double duty that day. I have to run from one stage to the next to, to play the gigs. But uh, that's going to be exciting. We're also on another thing called the Toledo Death Fest in June, right. which, which has Oceano headlining it. Uh, and the convalescence, which is another great band. So there's a that's a great thing. And then we have we have some more tour dates that are in the works. But we've got a really really big tour coming up uh, for January and February next year, which I can't announce yet because it hasn't been announced. But okay. it's definitely going. And it's in the U.S., but it's definitely going to set some things over the edge. It's going to be badass. So uh, as soon as we can let everybody know about that, we will. But we've got some really cool things in the works for for embryonic this year and next dude do you ever plan on being home you're going to you're going to the uk with with soil then you're going to be in vakken then you're going to be on tour are you ever home well i stayed home for four years <laughs> okay so uh, that's the last, it <laughs> the last uh, the last tour we did was uh the last tour i did at least was uh february of uh 2020 right well and then the pandemic hit and, you know, tours were getting canceled left and right, postponed, this and that. So I was just like, you know what, let's just put everything on hiatus until the world comes back to where we don't have to worry about things getting canceled and people being afraid to go back out. Right. So, you know, did some sporadic shows in between that, you know, so I went to Australia. We did a bunch of embryonic shows with like Soulfly and uh, some festivals and we went out with Pyrexia on a mini tour and stuff. Okay. Uh, did a bunch of stuff but not real solid you know month to month touring so being the glutton of, of, for punishment that i am i kind of just opened the floodgates for both bands and uh here we are in 2024 like with so much stuff to do it's 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 mind-blowing so i'll see how i end up at the end of this one with <laughs> to see where we put 2025 but uh not you know definitely making up for lost time here <laughs> i'd say man definitely i want to go back real quick to vakin just just for a second i mean for you personally and it doesn't matter which band you're talking about either one you've obviously with soil you've played big festivals you've played festivals before you've obviously played the oz fest and those types of things but vakin at least from everybody i've ever talked to is a different animal, you know, with the, just the number of people that are there. And unlike any festival here in the States, everybody is willing to accept any kind of metal. You know, it's not like, it's not like sectioned off, like, well, this is the, the stage with the new bands and this is the stage with the new metal bands. And this is the stage with the old school, you know, everybody in Europe seems more willing to accept that so for you how do you feel about you know getting in front of eighty thousand people twice in a day that are literally going to worship what you're doing i mean europe is it, the uk and europe are just such great places to play it, it's and for the fact that you know just what you said they're so open to music and when they enjoy a band and when they like a band it doesn't matter what genre you are they appreciate it and you, they'll combine bands you know we uh with soil we did a, a a festival in norway and we played with skid row and arch enemy <laughs> you know, which which is a crazy combination of the three bands we were three of the headliners you know on that fest but right. you know Vakken is such a an amazing we've played i played it once you know with soil back in 2019 and we actually went on at two o'clock in the morning and we thought oh my god there's going to be nobody there but it was right. full it was like they did not stop and I, and it was amazing because we got people that had you know gotten their second third fourth win by that time they were full-on drunk if they were drinking <laughs> and just had everybody you could just tell everybody was having such a good time and you know uh this year at Bakken Soil's playing during the day so we'll see you know how that is and we're playing on one of the bigger stages so you know that'll be awesome but you know I think the biggest crowd that I've ever played in front of was at the Download Festival in UK we they had a clocked in number on the main stage that we were in at about 55,000 people. And it was like a sea of people. It was weird. Mm -hmm. It was like they were going in like a wave. It was literally like looking out into the ocean and seeing just waves of people going. It was just so surreal. But, you know, Europe and uh, 
and the UK and, you know, places like South America and things like that, they just have such great festivals and they'll combine so many styles of music. I, I kind of wish they'd do more of that, you know, over here in the US, but, you know, uh, different strokes for different folks. And, you know, yeah. it's just kind of different, different, you know, outlooks and, and different vibes and stuff that people do to where, you know, you can go over to Europe and the UK and, you know, country music isn't that big there, you know, hip hop right. and rap and stuff aren't really there. They love their, their heavy rock and their metal and their death metal and their thrash. And, you know, it's just more indicative of the, of the territory and the people, but I love going over there. It's going to be, it's going to be a real uh, pleasure because I, we haven't been over there since 2019. So, you know, you're talking what, five years at this point, Yeah. So going back to the full body of Europe and the entire UK is going to be really awesome this year. And especially with both bands. Right on. Well, it sounds great, dude. Lots of lots of great stuff coming. I am definitely going to recommend this album, Embryonic Autopsy, Orig Origins of the Deformed is the album. It's out June 14th. It, I can't say it enough how brutal it is. I'm not just saying it because I'm talking to Tim. I literally, I love death metal, and I never get any that I'm really satisfied with. This I got and just played it over and over and over and over because it's just a such a slab of brutality man it's so good so everybody buy it and don't just stream it don't be a fucking lame piece of shit buy it buy it where you can buy it tim where can they buy it when it's when it's out well i first of all i appreciate that thanks so much brother it means you know so much when you pour your heart and soul into you know a, a piece of music and to hear somebody compliment it and say that they enjoyed it that much thank you you know hats off sure. to you for that uh, as far as where to get it, uh, if you go to the Embryonic Autopsy Facebook page, uh, there's tons of links all over the place, tons of posts. It's uh, it's available on Amazon. It's available to order through uh, Best Buy. Uh, it's, there's there's all these places you can pre-order it, pre-save it, you know, get it on iTunes, wherever you want to get it. Uh, it's coming out on vinyl and like full-on full poster layout digipack. So the, the layout's really cool for it. The album cover and the inner art is absolutely disgusting. So anybody who likes the uh, the total like package where you can listen to something and look at the artwork and stuff while you're listening to the record and kind of get grossed out a little bit, read the lyrics. Uh, it's definitely the packaging definitely reflects that. So there's all kinds of places to buy it. You know, like I said, Amazon's got it up for for pre order right now everywhere. That's always a nice easy place to buy stuff because it just gets shipped right to your house. You don't get billed till it ships. So nice uh, it's everywhere so i hope everybody enjoys it and if you uh if you love brutal old school just pure death metal uh we're i guess we're the band for you yes <laughs> I, so. I i definitely agree so one more time origins of the deformed is the album embryonic autopsy is the band and tim thanks so much for joining me once again on chris Aker presents absolutely always a pleasure brother you take care now Support the Classic Metal Show today when you become a show VIP on our Locals page. It only costs $4.99 a month and it's worth that and so much more. Experience all the real and uncensored talk about everything under the sun, including sex, politics, pop culture, and of course, heavy metal. Additionally, the CMS Locals page is the spot to get the audio and video episode of the Classic Metal Show commercial free. 
Also be on the lookout for episodes of the classic metal show that aren't released anywhere else, prize giveaways, and much more. Join us today by visiting classicmetalshow.locals.com. Sign up and take part in the best online spot for the classic metal show. Join today 